let's talk a little bit about PEMDAS first. And when you deal in math with PEMDAS, how many operators are you typically concerned with? Someone raise their hand and tell me some of the operators you use in math for PEMDAS. Mr. Degouge, how many how many are there, sir? And what, what, can you name some of them? Okay, so you see those are the operators you typically deal with. Let me show you what operator precedence and uh, looks like in Java and just how many different operators there are. So if I look up uh, operator precedence in Java, right? And I come over to one of these sites, they're all the same. Look how many operators there are. Do you see them? There's some huge number of operators. Now, the good news for you is we're only going to learn a tiny number of these operators this year. We've already learned the parentheses. We're going to learn the array access. We've already started using the dot operator to show who owns what. We're going to learn these today. These you already know. Sorry, these you already know. Uh, you've learned um, uh, you've learned some of these. Did we do uh, modulo in this class? Did we learn modulo? Okay, so you've learned those. Uh, we're going to learn these today. You see, they look a lot very similar to these, but based on where they're positioned, they're a little bit different. And we're we're not going to learn any of this. Uh, we will come back and learn this later in the year. And uh, these are we're not going to learn this year. But these we will learn. The, these here, we'll learn those today as well. And we'll also talk about some of these today. Now, you can see that trying to figure out or memorize the, the PEMDAS rules for Java is nearly impossible. There are just too many operators. So the good news is you don't have to memorize it all. But there are a few important principles that you do need to understand. For example, Here's an operator you're very familiar with, which is the assignment operator or the equals operator. Do you notice that among all the operators here that it's pretty much close to last? That means that when you have a statement like this in, uh, let me show you here. Uh, let me get a little empty slide here. When you have a statement like this, When you have a statement like this, this assignment operator, try to think of it as an operator just like this is an operator and this is an operator, okay? What this means, what this table is trying to tell you is that this assignment operator has very low precedence and therefore all this stuff over here happens, all this stuff over here on the right happens before the assignment happens. So the assignment here happens last. You see that, right? Because it's a low precedence operator. Now here, between the plus and the star, who can raise their hand and tell me which one is going to happen first? Ms. Salutkar, which one? OK, the star. Because the precedence rules that you learn in math, they still apply when you're doing Java. It's just that the Java rules are a superset or more complicated version of PEMDAS. I call it PEMDAS on steroids. Okay, it's just, it has all the rules you already know, and then a whole bunch more. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about next, we're gonna talk about the logical operators. So let me show you what the logical operators look like. Here's some logical operators. Here's greater than, less than. This one here is called greater than or equal to. This is less than or equal to. There is equal to, and then there's also not equal to. These are the basic logical operators in Java. Let's talk now. I'm guessing this may be look, look a little confusing to you. So let me start off by explaining what's going on there. In your math class, you have grown up writing x is greater than or equal to 3 like this all the time. The problem is that writing this symbol is painful on a keyboard because you have to come over here and you have to go to find special characters. Then you have to chase it down and do all that business. So we don't want to have to do that every time we write a greater than or equal to. So in computer science, and this is not just Java, but most programming languages, this symbol has been converted to this sequence. 
Now, if you accidentally write this, that is not going to work. However, the College Board will not take points off if you write it in the wrong order. I haven't decided yet if we're going to take points off in this class or not, but on the AP exam, they'll let it go. I'm inclined to let it go here also, but please try to write it the same way you say it, greater than or equal to. There's also a similar symbol for less than or equal to where you, you just write it like this. You just go less than or equal to like that. Okay. Now, this expression in Java is a Boolean expression. Who can raise their hand and tell me what does that mean? Mr. Pandali, what does Boolean expression mean? This expression will yield one of two answers, true or false. Either x is greater than or equal to 3 or it's not. Now, let's just talk about a couple more logical operators. Let's talk about this one. And this one is sometimes confused with this operator, which is this one. Let me put them side by side here. Uh, let me put them over here, actually. This is the single equals and the double equals. This is an assignment operator. It's an action. This is a logical operator. The double equals, it asks a question. So if I go like this, it's asking the question, is x equal to 3? That's the question it's asking. And once again, the answer is going to be Boolean. It's either true or false. This is not a Boolean operator. This one basically is going to do what you say. So if you go like this, it's going to take the value 3 and put it in the variable called x. You see the difference, right? Action. This one is an action. Oops. Action. The last one I want to go over is this one. This is the not equals operator. And when will this expression that I've highlighted come back to be true? Mr. Orispaya, when you come in, target. Okay, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So uh, when is this expression that I've highlighted going to be true? Uh, Ms. Sophie, when is that the part that I've highlighted here? When's that going to be true? Right. It's true when X is any value other than three. Okay, so those are our basic logical operators. The next set of operators I would like to discuss with you are going to be the Boolean operators. So I should have put the title up on the top here. And I'm going to show them to you. This is called the AND operator. This is called the OR operator. This is called the NOT operator. All right. Now, I mentioned to you that you do not have to memorize the precedence table here. But well, one tiny piece of it that you do have to memorize is that if you look over here, the AND operator, it has higher precedence than the OR operator. So let me first show you what these operators do and how the precedent rules apply. So looking at the AND operator first, if I have an expression like this, A and B, A and B themselves have to be either Boolean variables or Boolean, oper or Boolean uh, expressions. But this expression that you see here, let's say I go like this. If I go like this, Boolean C equals A and B. C will only be true if A and B both evaluate to true. In other words, this is an AND. It requires the left-hand side to be true and the right-hand side to be true for the result to be true. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw something called a truth table for the AND operator. Let me show you that. So here I'm going to say what A is, and here I'm going to say what B is, and here is our result C, and we're going to go with false, 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 true, true, false. I counted this wrong. I need another 
row here and true, true. And what I want you to do is right now on either a computer or on a piece of paper, write down what are the values for C gonna be for the AND operator. When I'm using an when I'm using an AND, try to figure out what are the values going to be here for C. Mr. Marjoram, sir, if A and B are both false, what will this expression yield? Sir, the only answers are true or false. Not is not an answer. False. How about, sir, if A is false and B is true, what will C be? Mr. Garofalo, sir, if A is false and B is true, what will the expression A and B yield? Mr. Borden, sir, if A is true and B is false, what will the expression A and B yield? Ms. Davis, if they're both true, what will the expression yield? Okay, so here is the truth table for the AND operator. The only way to get a true here is if both operands, the left side and the right side of the AND operator, are true. That's the only way to get a true. The next one we're going to talk about is the OR operator, which is this one here. And the first thing I need to tell you is that in logic, there are two types of ORs. There's something called an inclusive OR, and then there's an exclusive OR. Let me give you an example of each. Let's say that you wanted to go to an amusement park and get on a ride, and the ride said 12 years old, or you have to be five foot tall. Now, if you happen to be both five foot three inches tall and more than 12 years old, can you ride the ride? Yes, that is called an inclusive or. That means one of them has to be true or both can be true and the output is true. Now, let me give you an example of an exclusive or. Let's say Mr. Sarkar is out to dinner and on the menu, I'm looking at the desserts, there's the cheesecake and the chocolate tart. And Mrs. Sarkar says, you can have either one. Do you think I can have both of them? No. So that's an example of an exclusive or where exactly one of them have to be true. In Java, this or is an inclusive or. It's inclusive. That means A or B or both. So given that's the case, please fill out now the truth table for the or. Mr. Sneed, if A and B are both false, what is the expression A or B going to yield, sir? That's right, sir. And Mr. Orispayev, Sir, if A is false and B is true, what is the OR expression going to yield here? Mr. Sawyer, sir, if A is true and B is false, what will the expression A or B yield? And Ms. Ariam, if they're both true, what will the expression yield? Okay, so that is the truth table for an OR gate. Next, I'm going to show you the truth table for a NOT gate. A NOT is a unary operator. These are binary operators that take two operands. The NOT only takes a single operand, so I don't even need this column. So now my question is, if A is false, what is not A? Uh, Miss uh, Tamara, what is not A? That is correct. And if A is true, what is not A, Mr. Menez? Uh, 
Okay, so that is the truth table for the not operator. And now I want to give you an idea of the order of precedence here. So I'm going to draw a little expression. I'm going to say not A and B or C, not C and not D, like that. So let me blow this up for you so you can see a little bit better. And you can see here that I've mixed up the ands and the ors and the nots. And what I'll tell you by looking at this, uh, this picture here, you can see that the, the um, I don't see the knot. Oh, here's the knot is all the way up here. So the knot is all the way up here. Here is the and, and here is the or. So you can see that the not operator is going to have the highest precedence. Then the and operator is going to have the second highest precedence. And the or will be third highest. And what I want you to do is write this either on the computer as a comment or on a piece of paper. And I want you to insert parentheses that will make it clear to the reader the order that is going to be evaluated. So you're going to insert multiple sets of redundant parentheses that do not change the order of operations. So let me get you started. So here will be one set right here. Because that one's going to get done first. Here's another set. And now you put in the rest. There should be a whole bunch of uh, parentheses that you need here. Okay, Mr. Mason, where would the next set of parentheses go? The not D, sir. Okay, Mr. Mason, uh, I'm finished with the first round of parentheses. Where would the first set be around and where would the next set be around, sir? Okay, uh, that is true. But before those are evaluated, a different expression is going to get evaluated even earlier. What would be the other set, sir? That's right. Sir, can you tell me why the A and B portion will get evaluated before the C and D portion? That's correct. And finally, we have one last set of parentheses, which will just indicate the last operation performed, which will be the OR operator right there. So the OR will get done last. Okay. So the, the NOTs get done first. The ands get done next, and then the or gets done last. We're all good there? Okay. Now, let's take a look at one other expression here. And let me blow this up for you. And discuss with your partner... What would make the most sense? Should we do the relational operators here first, or should we do the and operator first? And I'll to help you, I will put up the order of operations for you as well. Okay. Who have I not called on yet? Who's hiding? Oh, Misha Cohn. Misha Cohn, what do you think has got higher precedence here? Do you think the greater than, less than business has higher precedence? Or do you think the and and or and not that has higher precedence? What do you think? Yeah, the relational. So you can see that the relationals, where are they? Blind. You hear the relationals. You can see the relationals. They have higher precedence than the and and the or here. 
The not actually is grouped with the other operators as even higher precedence, but we're not doing that one right now. Okay, so you can see that this one will be equivalent to having it like this. All right. Okay, so now uh, most of these you've kind of seen either in math class or in something similar. I'm gonna show you some more funky operators that you have not seen before. And the first thing we're gonna discuss is how to add one to a variable. So let's say I had a variable like this and um, I put a four in the box and I wanna add a one to it. And Java gives you all kinds of different ways to add a one to the variable. And they're all used in different places to be more efficient than other places. So let me just go through some examples with you now. So the easiest way to add one to this variable is to just go like this, x equals x plus one like that. Now this confuses beginning programmers because you have x on both sides of the equal assignment operator. But what's really happening here is this is the old value of x and this is the new value of x. So my question to you now is after this expression uh, assignment operator takes place, what number will be in the X variable? Uh, Miss Emily, what's X gonna be equal to after I'm all done? Miss, I, here's what X is, look, here's what X is. It'll be five, okay? So after this is done, X will be five. Now I'm gonna show you another way to add one like this, like that. So at this point, X is five. If I add one again, what's X gonna be equal to this time? Uh, looks like we're back to you, Mr. Degouge. What's it gonna be, sir? X is now up to six. You know what, I think at this point it's better if I shift to the blue J. We've already talked about modulo in a different class. We talked today earlier before lunch, we talked about relational and logical operators. So what I'd like to talk about now are the compound and the assignment operators. Uh, and we're gonna just finish with that. And for that uh, little exercise, I'm going to go through the blue J with you. And I would encourage you to keep up with me here so you can follow along and do as I do. So we already talked about a couple of these. We said if we go like this, that this will put an X, uh, a four into X. And let me just show you that. So I'll print the value. And let's just run this. And you can see there's the four being printed for the X value. And uh, I'm gonna show you several more ways now to add one to the, <clears throat> to the X value. So another way we can add one is like this. And now if I was to print X at this point, remember I've already increased it by once up, one up here, I'm gonna increase it by another one here. So now X is going to be five. So let's run it. And you can see that X is now five. And so that will be another way. Now, while I have you here for this, this is a, a compound assignment statement. Uh, there's some other things we can do with compound assignment statements also. So for example, uh, let's say I have another variable here, Y equals six. I could do something like this. I can go uh, system, uh, let's go um, uh, in Z equals uh, times equals, uh, uh, let's try this, y times equals two. Uh, who can tell me here, what do you think is happening over here? This is another compound assignment operator. Uh, let's see here. Miss Ria, what do you think is happening over here? So how much is that, Miss? So now y is equal to 12. So let me just show you that one. And there's the 12. So you can see that these compound assignment statements are funky. I'll show you one last one. 
instead of doing it as a multiplication, I can also do it as a division. And uh, Ms. Chacon, what do you think is going to happen here? Look, I got six, and then I'm doing this bizarre divide equals business. What do you think is happening there? So what would be the answer now, Miss? Okay, so here I'm taking the Y value and I'm dividing by two. And so now I'm going to get a value of three here. So I'm going to compile and run it. And now you can see that the 12 is turned into a three. So these compound assignment statements are unusual. Uh, they're just quicker ways to write things. So I've shown you this is one way to add one. This is another way to add one. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple more now uh, that are kind of weird. So this is one way. And that is called a pre-increment operator, operation, operation like that. And if I was to print X over here, uh, now X is going to be six because once again, I have added. So I, I started off as three. I added one, it became four. I added one, it became five. Here's another one that I've added. Now it's going to be six. So let's run that one. So there's six. So yeah, X is six here. And then the other one is going to be a post increment. I'll show you that one last here like that and then this one and this one here x is going to be seven so these are all the different ways to add one to a variable the reason we have so many different ways is that adding one to a variable is something we do very frequently in computer science and these have advantages and disadvantages that will become clear throughout the year let me just run this one for you so make sure you understand this one so you can see that's another one uh, i want to spend a little bit of time now i want to spend a little bit of time now talking about the difference between this and this all right so let's uh let's switch back to the slides for a second actually i take that back let's go right here and i'm going to create another variable and I'm going to go like this. Oops. And my question is, what value is going to be stored in Y? And after both of these statements are done, what value is going to be stored in X? That's the question. So I'm going to print those values out for you so you can see. Like that so before you run this i would like you to chat with your neighbor and try and figure out what values are going to get printed for x and y okay um let's see here Miss Banerjee, let's take the easy case first. X starts off at three. What happens after this statement is finished? What's X going to be? So my question is, I started off X at three, then I did an auto increment on X. And so after both of these statements are finished, what value will be in the X variable? Four. That's the easy question. The question on Y, though, is, is Y going to have a 3 or a 4 in it? Do you want to take a guess? 4. So let's run this. And you can see that they're both equal to 4. Now what happens is I'm going to move this, these, this auto increment over to the other side. And I'm going to run it again. And as you've probably figured out now, what's going to change? What's different now? Mr. Pandali, can you tell me what's going to print that's going to be different now? No? Uh, X will still be 4. What will Y be, though? Any guesses? That's right. And we'll talk about in a second why that is. So you can see X is 4 now, but Y is 3. So this is called a 
post increment, post increment. And in Latin, what does this prefix post mean? Yes, Mr. Degouge? It means after. So I finished earlier telling you that the assignment operator is uh, a fairly low operator uh, uh, precedence wise, but this post operator is going to take place after all the other assignments are done. Okay. So you do everything you do else on the line and then you do the increment on the X. So he, at this point, X is three when the value three is transferred to Y and then X is increased. Do you understand the difference here? Let's see if you really do. Let's make it a slightly more complicated. And I'm going to go like this. And let's do this one. And see if you can predict what is going to be the values of X, Y, and Z that are printed here. Here I'm obviously adding one to Y. Here I'm subtracting one from X. So let's see if you can figure out what's going to, if you can predict it. Please go ahead and try this one on your own and first predict what you think is going to happen, then print it out and see if you got the answer that you were expecting. Okay, so I'm going to run this for you and I'm going to go walk, walk you through this because it's kind of uh, complicated. So you can see the right answer is two, six, and eight. And I'm going to try and explain this to you. So the first thing that happens here is this plus plus y, and y is being incremented, so it's going to be a 6. So up here, I'll do this in comments. It's going to be z equals, and it's going to use a 6 for this part right here. And then this uh, pre-decrement is going to happen before the addition. It's going to happen before anything. Uh, so this is going to be a plus, and then I'm going to subtract 1 from x. So it's going to be two. And then I'm going to do this, this uh, addition, six plus two. And so Z is going to end up with an eight in it like that. Okay. Let's try a harder one. Let's try this one now. Try that one. See if you can figure out now what are X, Y, and Z going to be after those statements are finished. Notice that these are post increment and post decrement operators. They're going to happen after the plus and the assignment are all finished. So they're going to happen late. They're going to happen late. Okay. So my question to you, listen carefully. What value of Y is going to be part of the new Z? What value of Y is going to be part of the new Z? Is it four, five, or six? Miss Ria? It's going to be five. So this part here is going to be five when the addition happens. And what value of X, Miss Mrithika, what value of X is going to be used in the computation for Z? No, so you can see here that oh, X. No, sorry. Mm. No, this decrement is going to happen late, so the decrement is not going to contribute to the value of Z. So, what value of Z, Miss Caitlin? What value of Z is going to contribute to the value of, of Z? What value of X? Sorry, three. So you can see that Z is going to be eight again, but. X and Y are now going to be six and two at the end. So let's run it. You can see Z is still eight now and X and Y are still two and six. I'll do one more of these with you. And 
talk this through with your partner and try to figure out what what the value of z is going to be here and what x and y are going to be just think of it like this look i'm going to add one to y early i'm going to subtract one from x late late meaning after everything else happens on this line Two six nine is the right answer. Let's run it. You can see here that when Z is evaluated, the value six is going to be used for Y because it's a pre-increment. And the old value of X is going to be used to calculate Z. That's still a three. X will be uh, lowered by one later because uh, it's a late, it's a late decrement. And so X will still end up as two and Y will stand, still end up as six, but Z will use these values for computation. So you can see that this is confusing. This is covered in your rune stone, so you'll get more practice there. I'm going to leave it here because this is not a heavily tested topic on the AP test. There'll only be one or two multiple choice questions on this, but it is covered. It's also on your unit one exam. So it's important that you understand these all these operators, increment, decrement, post-increment, post-decrement, et cetera.